masks during times when people are sick or all of those things. Hi everyone, um, it's a little after three, so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for being here. My name is Melissa Dagny and I am going to talk about modules and pages in Canvas today. And um, this is the second session that I've done on this topic. And just like the first, I'm equally as excited. It's a foundational piece of Canvas, um, the ways that you organize and present a lot of your information for your course. And so, you know, everyone uses these features. So um, I'm happy to be sharing everything I know. So what I'm gonna do first is share my screen. Give me just a second. Alrighty. Okay, so if you can give me a nod, if you see my screen, I see my screen. I've got two computers going so I can see everyone's face. Yes. And, you know, keep that, keep the chat open as well. So if anybody asks a question and I don't catch that, please um, interrupt me, speak up. I'm happy, happy to make sure we all are on the same page um, before I move on. So that's, that's definitely important. Okay, so modules and pages, we're gonna talk about the comparison of Blackboard to Canvas for these features. Just wanna start where you're coming from before we get going to um, where, where we're gonna end up. And then I'm gonna say a little bit about how modules and pages organize. Organ Getting a little audio feedback. Can you guys mute your mics? Okay, so um, how they organize information, create and edit pages using the rich content editor, and then we're gonna put together a module. So you'll be clear on that. And I'll be happy to answer questions at the end, but also anytime throughout. So, give me one second. Okay. Okay, so first we're going to look at Blackboard. And I put together a very, very simple example course that shows two learning modules and two content folders, which is really the two main features that are comparable to what you're going to see in Canvas modules and pages. So when I split my screen in half, and you can see on both sides, Hold on one sec. We're going to look at our modules. Okay, what you'll see, uh oh, wrong one. Don't be alarmed. This takes a second to find them. Okay, so in my Canvas course on the right hand side, I've got four items right here that are corresponding to what you're seeing in my Blackboard course. So I've created them over in Blackboard. I migrated that content over to Canvas, just like we're having done for all your 2020 courses. And this is what happens when it comes over here. So these learning modules and content folders become Canvas modules. And anything that's inside of them also is going to be copied into your Canvas course. So usually it's a one-to-one -one and it comes out pretty cleanly. But just to give you an idea of exactly what we're looking at, if I go inside my learning module one, I have a Blackboard item. And you'll see over in Canvas, it's copied in as this Blackboard page. That little icon there means page. I have a Blackboard file on the left that copied in as a file in Canvas, which is represented with the paperclip icon. And then I have a Blackboard assignment and that copied in as a Canvas assignment. So what you're used to seeing in Blackboard is going to be learning modules and content folders, and they'll come over into Canvas into your modules page. 
and the list will go down the page depending on how much stuff you had in your Blackboard course is how much you'll have here. And at that point, the things that are inside your learning modules and content folders come in in all the variety of ways that we will see in all of the different topics that you're attending professional development for. So for this one, we're gonna specifically talk about pages. And I'd like to start with what are modules and pages. And the best way that I can get this across is if you imagine that you're organizing a garage and you go outside and you look at all your stuff and you determine that you're gonna need three boxes to put your stuff away, well, the boxes are your modules. They're the containers in Canvas that let you organize all the other pieces. The pages are just one item that can go inside the box. All your other kind of belongings can also go in the box, but we're just gonna talk about pages today. So when you have, and I'm gonna show you when you have a Canvas course, that does not have modules set up, but does have pages. Okay, so I'm gonna show you in this course, I have all of these different pages. I also have a whole bunch of different assignments. I have a bunch of discussions and I'm getting to them from the course menu on the left. I've got a quiz. And I've also got a ton of files in my file structure. Without modules, I don't have any modules, there's only one way to get to those things and that is through these links on the left. So I can click on a page, bring up my view all pages menu and I can find something. You can see this is kind of cumbersome. It would be for your students as well. And then I can scroll down. I don't have anywhere else I can go. I have to go back to my course menu and I've got to find the next thing. It's not very user friendly. But if I take this exact same course and I've copied it over into this space and I create modules, everything is then connected so that students don't have to dig for it. So they can get to all of the pages that I add. They can click on one page and at the bottom, the system is going to automatically add a next button because my module has put things in order. So I can click next. At the bottom of the second page, I can now go back to the previous page or keep going. And I can just easily click through and navigate the structure of the course that you put together. I can also go back to my modules, scroll down and jump to anywhere else that I wanna go. So really it's, it's a very student friendly feature and it has a lot of power in settings that you can handle controlling various pieces. So let's say for example, you have a class that you want to make sure they have read the syllabus They've maybe taken um, you know, a, a short quiz at the beginning of the semester for whatever reason before they move on to the next learning module. You can set all that up and add requirements so that they can basically complete something either in order, so in sequential order is one option, or they can do some other sort of one or more requirements. Like they have to take the quiz um, or they have to read something before they can open up the next module. And then you also have the basic lockdown feature. So if you wanna keep your students on track, so for um, module one is during week one, at the end of the week, module two would open up at the end of week you know, two, module three, and et cetera. So all of your, your module settings are gonna be available in this multi, you know, additional options menu to the right. So you get to do all sorts of stuff there. So at that, and so now that we kind of understand what modules and pages do. So modules are gonna be the boxes you put your stuff in. 
they give navigational structure to your course to make it easy for your students. And then pages are where you're gonna give a lot more details, maybe a little, maybe a lot. It really is depending on you, but we're gonna talk about that. Does anyone have any questions before we get into pages? So basic principle of the module being these blocked structures that hold other items. Melissa, I have a question. Will our, if you have things in a file, will that transfer as a module? No, not necessarily. No. So the, the folder is what brings it over as a module. If it's just a file straight, I do believe it's just going to transfer as just a file in the back end of your course. Okay, and I'm, I meant to say folder. If you have a folder that has yes. a bunch of stuff in it, that will transfer over as a module. Exactly. So okay. I, I can show my Blackboard course that I have this folder here. I copied okay. that and that became this first one, Blackboard Content Folder 1 with C materials is right here as this module right there. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Oh, absolutely. And then it, you can even go a little further into this, that if you have a folder inside a folder, it will do a subheading to represent that inside the Canvas module. So you can see inside my folder, I have a second folder and that's where I get this header and it separates the items with an indentation. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, that's a good question. Does anybody have any others? Okay, so we've got lots more to talk about. Um, I'm basically going to collapse the modules I copied from Blackboard here. They're, they were for the example, but there's just not really much in there that I'm gonna use today. I'm gonna skip down and I'm going to click on this formatting to break up text and using the rich content editor page. And what I did here is I used some placeholder text to just put some information straight on the page and I didn't do anything fancy to it. And I'm gonna show you how we can do some changes to make this a little bit easier to read. I clicked the edit button and it opens up my rich content editor, which has all these buttons and options. Now, a lot of you are going to have familiarity with different programs. So the tabs up here at the top are similar to your options in Word that if you click on them, they give you more options. These do the same thing and they're just going to drop down and give you more things you could do. All of the icons are the shortcut buttons. So everything you do with the shortcut buttons are also capable of being done up here. It's just, as you get a little bit more familiar or maybe right away, you like the icons better. It's just two ways to accomplish the same thing. So for example, all these built-in formatting options are going to be really beneficial to me. I'm going to select this header too. Let's just, um, pretend it says something important for your course. And I'm going to select header two to format it. It's increased the font size. It's a little bit um, more stands out from the rest of the text. And it's also tagged the code for screen readers so that um, it helps students who might be using a screen reader go through this information a little bit more smoothly. I'm gonna repeat that for the other heading sizes just to give you an idea of what's already built in. And let's say for heading three, I want to indent. Maybe I wanna move my stuff over, I can do that. Heading four is a little smaller, but same concept. Let's say I'm gonna move this one two spaces. So now I've got something going on where I'm explaining this information uh, in a hierarchy. You can do the basics. You can bold, italicize, change colors, um, you know, all of the things that you would normally do when you're typing in a Word document, you're going to be able to do here. But you're going to be able to do more because it is a website. And so it lets you do some more multimedia. Now, what I have open in this tab up here is a YouTube video. 
And I'm gonna show you three ways that you can add this video to a course. And there's pros and cons to all of them, but just for example sake, I'm gonna click share. And I'm going to copy the regular URL that it pops up automatically. And I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to say, YouTube video link, select my text, and I'm going to insert an external link to YouTube and paste that in right there and say done. And now that is a hyperlink that if students click it, they would open up this YouTube video. So that's one way. Um, it's not really the best way in my opinion, but it definitely gets the job done if you wanna send them over to a website to check something out. A better way from the same place is to choose embed. And if I copy the embed code and I come back over to Canvas and I click this cloud embed icon, there's gonna be a box that's gonna pop up and I'm gonna paste the embed code and I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm gonna click submit. And it's gonna put that video right here where they can watch it on the screen. It's a little bit easier. It doesn't require students to leave Canvas to watch your videos, so that's really nice. And that process for embedding also works the same way if you're using Microsoft Stream, um, anything with an embed code, you literally just click that cloud button and paste it right in there. Now there's a third way. I said I'd show you three ways. So the third way is if maybe you're more of an on the fly thinker and you don't have your video selected and you're in your course building your page and you think, okay, I'm going to, I wanna put a YouTube video here, but I don't know which YouTube video I wanna use. You can click this apps and it's, it's a plug. Looks like it goes into a socket right there. And if you click that, I'm gonna click view all. It says YouTube because that's the last thing that I use. So it's remembering me, but I'm gonna view all so I can show you. There's a lot of apps, right? So there's, you can get a video from Khan Academy if you wanted to instead. Um, you can link to a OneDrive file. You can do a Quizlet. All of this stuff is in here. I'm gonna go down to YouTube and I'm going to click it. And then I'm gonna say, Oh, look, it, it remembers me from doing this already. I'm gonna click course design and I'm gonna say enter. And then I can choose from whatever my results populated here. Let's say I really like this course design essentials video. So I click embed and you can see how it looks a little different. It makes it a little bigger, but it still functions the same. So now I'm gonna save and let you see my results. So here I had my YouTube video, which opens in a new tab. Here I have the one I took the embed code from YouTube and put it on the page. And then this one I used the plugin app to add a video I searched for. There are a lot of other things you can do here. So Another option I wanna show you is some images, right? So I'm gonna change this back to a paragraph style at the top. And I'm gonna say, I want to insert an image from my course images, cause I already have some up there. I can do that here from insert, or I can put my cursor in the same place and I can go to the image icon and I can do the same thing here. So. There's lots of ways to do the exact same thing in Canvas and just pick the one you like the best. So if I click course images, there we go. I'm admitting, I'm so sorry, someone was in the waiting room that popped up and I was finishing a thought and didn't even notice it. Okay, so I click to add a course image and I'm over here in my course images showing, it shows me what I have uploaded in the back end of my course and files. And I'm gonna select the light bulb and it's gonna put that on the page for me. And then I can close that. And here I have my picture. 
I can then select the picture and I can format it. So I can say, you know, I want, for example, I want it to be centered. I can do that. I can click my image options and I can choose to make it smaller. Um, and it will do that. I can also control Z and undo my choice. So that can be really helpful when you're working if you change your mind. And I also can choose to make the image decorative if I don't want screen readers to pay attention to it, or I can type a description here for what I'm wanting my students to learn if they have any sort of vision issues where they can't see the image clearly. So for example, um, you know, if I'm wanting them to understand that this video, you know, this image showed maybe, um, you know, lights are hung from the ceiling, like maybe it's a design and we want them to understand that. So I can put that in and I can click done. And now that's been coded and put into what needs to happen when that student is using their screen reader. So I'm gonna actually go down and show you um, a couple of the other buttons that are gonna happen below our rich content editor. So here we've made some changes and then we have options below. So you have your keyboard shortcuts. You can view that here. You have an accessibility checker. And if you click that and don't have issues, you get some balloons. And then you've got your word count. You have your options to adjust the code that's in the back end. Sometimes um, one way you might want to change something here is in my image right here, I have the image is set as width 900. If I change that to 100% and I go back, it's always gonna be as wide as the page allows it on all of my students' um, devices. So you don't have to be a coding expert, but there might be some times you might wanna do just a little trick. I can make this larger so I have a bigger room to work. And I can, let's see, what am I doing here? Why does that keep popping up? Hmm. Escape is wanting, Zoom is wanting to participate. It, it takes over your computer, you know, it's okay. Okay, so escape is normally how you get out of that full screen, but if you're on a Zoom sharing your screen, it wants to go first, so you gotta do it twice. Okay, so lots of op options here. I can drag and drop these dots um, to give myself a bigger window. And then I can also change that other people can edit my pages as well. So if it's information you're giving your students, you would be the only one to, to want to edit. But if you want students to collaborate on a wiki type assignment where they're going to all create something on a page, then you can change the settings right down here at the bottom. Also, if you happen to build your course, let your students in to get started and they you know, for some reason need to be notified that you've made a change on the page. Maybe you've added a file you updated or you had some additional information. You can click the box and it will notify everybody in your course that you have made a change to that page. So that can be helpful just in communicating with everyone. So that's some of the features of how you're gonna be able to put stuff on pages. Um, if you view all, you just have a plus page button. And that is how you can create a new one fresh. You can make as many as you want. You've got options here as well that you can go to commons favorites and find other people's pages, import them into your course and then use them as templates to where you don't have to start from scratch. You've got ways that you can duplicate. Um, you can copy them to other courses. 
So that's very helpful if you're teaching something where maybe you've got a shared resource, you don't have to, to do it from scratch in every course, you can just copy. Can um, I ask a question about creating the page? Absolutely. So when you're talking about creating these pages and then moving them around, when you're creating it, are you, you're in a course right now or you're not in a course? I am in a course, yes. So you're creating that page for that course. Mm -hmm. But it's not, is it within a module right now or is it not within a module? I have it within a module, but I do. So right now I'm going to create a new one. So this is a new page. And I'm just going to say, you know, hello inside here. And I'm going to push save. And now this page, there's no next or previous buttons. It's not in a module. It's completely isolated by itself until I choose to put it somewhere. So now I can go over to my modules pages and that's actually was the next step in all of this is how you add this to a module. So it's really, really simple. You push the plus sign and you've got options of all the things you can add. So I'm gonna choose page and then I'm going to click the one I called new page. And I've got two here, so I must have done this also. So I'm going to click both, um, control, and then click both of them so I can select two. And I'm going to say add. And now the one I've created previously in my last session is here. And the new one that I didn't publish is also here. And that's the one I just said hello. Melissa. It, I have one other question. If you already have a file that you created that you want to use as a page, mm -hmm. can you just upload the file or do you just copy it and paste it in? Or what do you do? Okay, so you've got a couple of options there. So here when you build a module, and I'm going to actually delete this. Um, I'm going to remove these from my module and start fresh. And I'm going to add a few things. I'm gonna go and I'm going to add, I have an introduction. I'm going to add, I have several things I wanna add, learning materials and activities. I have a review and I'm gonna add those pages, but that's not all. I'm gonna add some more things, but you do one type of addition at a time. So add all your assignments, add all your, files, add all your pages. It's where, where are you getting those? Did you already put those into Canvas? Correct. So everything that's in my course, I can add to a module. So basically in the process of getting ready, your stuff would be copied over from Blackboard. So a lot of it might be there. If so you have things, then you would want to make sure you collect and upload them first. So, but if you have something that's on your computer, mm -hmm and you wanna move that to Canvas to a page, what do you do? So you, you, can't do that. you can, depending on what it is, there's a lot of different ways. So the first way I can show you adding a file. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to ask is if you just have a file you wanna add, you, yes. you can still do that. Yes, yeah, so you can go to file and you can look for something that you have already done. Like it's already in here. See so course files, documents. I already have a ton of stuff or I can do a new one and then it will let me choose on my computer, you know, what it is I want to upload. So let's say I'm going to choose to upload accelerated English, even though I believe I already have that in my course, I can still upload it again. And I add, it takes a second. And then now that, that file is right here in my module. So that's just one way. The other way, is to go to a page, edit the page, and then let's say I am giving students some information and I want to make a link to that file within that text, or maybe it's a bullet point and I want to give them access. It is called a course link. So instead of external, like I linked to YouTube or another website, it's internal course link. And now all of my files are also here. So I just uploaded that one and I put it in the module, but now I'm also going to come here and I'm going to link it on this page. So this gives you two different ways 
that students would see what you have going on. Okay, so this is the first one. Now my file is going to load in the preview and students can either download it or look at it right here. Take it just a second to load. While it's loading, are these files, do they, are they PDFs? Are they Word? Are, they, are there only certain types of doc, things that are files? All types of documents, so PowerPoints, PDFs, Word, Excel, any file type that you want to give to your students can be uploaded into the file structure. The only thing we don't recommend uploading into files is video because Canvas is not a video um, platform. It doesn't really, uh, it takes up a lot of space for one and then your course would not um, be able to have any more additions, but it also doesn't play the video back for your students very well, lower quality. So you basically put your video in Microsoft Stream, you get the embed code and you add it to a page. Everything else though, um, yeah, you just PDFs, Excel, Word, completely open. Okay, well, this is not um, going to load for me, apparently. I'm not really sure why it's not doing that. I have a lot going on on the computer, so it might just be um, a little slowed down. But your students would be able to preview this document right here on the page, or they can come back to the modules. The one I added straight here, it is on the page by itself. So that's the two main ways that you would give them access to a file as a link with other information or all by itself and it would be the only thing on the page. And it's 18 page document, which might be why it was taking so long. Are there any questions on adding a file? To create a page, did you say you press Plus. Mm -hmm. So you go to your pages link in your course navigation. Yes. And it's a button that's red with the plus sign plus page. And that's how you add a page. I and think your picture, which is wonderful, is blocking the where plus is, but I trust you. Thank you. Wait, 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 my picture. Hold on. I'm going to go back. No, I'm just saying the video feed of you is blocking part oh, of this. Oh, oh, yes, you can move my head. Click on me and move me out of your way. <laughs> oh, wow, I hated to <laughs> I do like, that. I don't see your picture, but I see, yes, no, it's my head that's in the way. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yes, so just move me out of the way sometimes. Um, I know having two, two um, monitors kind of getting all everybody out of my way is so helpful, but yes plus page, it's right there in the top right hand side. And that's pretty much the way you do adding anything um, in Canvas. It's very user friendly in that regard. So you're, if you wanna add a module, you're gonna push plus module. And so all of that, once you've figured it out for one thing, it's gonna become really familiar for the next feature as well. So here, I'm gonna add a module. And I'm going to say that this is my, let's call it module one, and we'll be you know, really basic about it. And I'm going to say that I want this module to be locked until I'm going to say next week. I'm going to say done. I want a prerequisite that I want them to have finished the considering designing pages before they move on. And I add that module. It's going to be at the bottom of the page and it's going to be empty. And it's going to be unpublished. So it's basically protecting you from yourself as you add things. It doesn't release them to your students immediately. It lets you put things together before you do that. Um, and then, of course, you can add anything you want to add. You can add assignments, you can add quizzes, files, pages sessions, and additionally, you can add URLs. When you when you first opened your Canvas, I thought I saw a button at the top that was similar to Blackboard and that there was a thing that said like student view. 
And I always look at that before I close or open anything, to just make sure that what I think the students are seeing is what they're seeing. Is, so that's like, is that the same as in Blackboard? So when I go to that, okay. Mm -hmm. And when you use your student view, it pops up with a lovely fuchsia reminding you you're here. Anything you do, it tracks that data. So basically, um, if you take a test, it's going to put the test results for test student in your gradebook. So you can pretend and practice. And then anytime you want to reset to start fresh, you've got that button as well. And you'll see the difference here right? Like I have very few links I can choose from because I'm the student, but when I leave student view, I'm the instructor and I have a lot. So these are good questions. Um, before I move on, does anybody have any additional? Which, let's see, which method takes up less space in Canvas? So Dr. Rodriguez, I'm sorry, I missed your chat question. Um, which method for, can you refresh what, what that question was in reference to? Yes, when you were putting in uh, images, you put in a YouTube, you put in a, a link, which is the mm -hmm. best one to take the less space that we should adhere to? So anytime that you're adding information from um, an embed code or um, a URL code, you're not taking up any space in your Canvas course at all. This item is still hosted over on YouTube. I haven't used any of my course space. So, okay. I, yes, so that's why linking to other um, items that are hosted elsewhere is really good. It helps your Canvas course um, stay within size and it functions a little bit more efficiently for the students too. Good, thank you. Hmm. Okay, so going back over to my modules page, um, I'm going to show you a, a few example pages. And I wanna, I wanna point out how they're put into a module here. So I've got the page I showed you how to edit on was called formatting to break up text. I've got four examples that are going to come next. And then I have a let's build a module where I've put in these three examples. And I'm going to remove that file at the bottom, right? Because I don't really want to show that. So we're going to look at these in order. So I'm going to click on the first one. And this is where we added lots of good stuff. And I'm scrolling down to click next. And this is an example of a problematic design example. So this particular page is, it looks very pretty, right? Like it's, it's colorful. I, I really, I think it looks like a lot of fun. But if I go to click edit and I check my accessibility checker, I get nine issues on this page. And I can click through and I can figure out what exactly it's telling me is wrong. For example, it uses a table, and in order to be, um, in order to pass this checker, I'd have to give basically alternative text for the table. That's what it's asking for there, um, and it's going to do that every time there's a table. It's going to tell me when my text is too small or um, if the color is not going to be contrasted enough. Um, it's going to tell me all of these details. But I'm just giving you an example of how this page, even though it looked good um, and I copied it into the course, it didn't turn out to be such a great choice because I don't want to fix all that mess. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to show you the next example. Now, this particular one I found and I thought, wow, this is really pretty. Um, they did a great job. Um, I'm not familiar with exactly how they made it work. But again, the Commons has lots of stuff you can borrow. And so I copied it into my course. And I'm going to click Edit. And you can see I can change the text and basically make this my own. All of this is anything I want to say. I can just 
just change it. And then click save. And if you check this one, there's no problems. So as you're borrowing, if you decide to go that route because you want to use somebody else's design, that button is really helpful. Here is a little bit more simple design with a TED Talk video, headings, and a bullet point list. And then this particular page with a to-do list for the student, and some icons. So I can show you. An icon is really just a small picture. And so let's say I wanna add another icon right here in front of this particular paragraph. And I'm gonna go over here to course image. And I'm going to pick this picture right here. It's gonna take it just a second. And because it is a very small picture, it's an icon size. But let's say I wanna try this one. That's supposed to be an icon, but it's giant. So you come over and you click your image and there's more options where you can come over here and say, well, it wants to go away from me. You wanna say, maybe I only want it to be 40 pixels and click done. And now I have an icon size. So icons in your course are really just small pictures. You can also select them and change the layout where you can align to the other side of the page. You wanna put your icon on the other side, whatever you have going on. And then we can save. And those changes will be doable. So I do have um, this you know, example of just a simple page with some icons, lots of white space, um, not giving students too much information. All of these, you've got full creative control. and accomplish them with the rich content editor. So there's no questions in the chat, but if you guys have questions, please let's talk about them. And I can clarify anything that you have lingering. So um, the way that we would have items within Blackboard is th the way that page look that you just created, that looks to me the way I would set up separate items, but they're all on one page. So is that what you recommend or is every item, what would be in Blackboard become a page? So when your course copies over, it does unfortunately come in piece by piece in a way that I don't recommend. So some people like it, but for the student's experience, I think that it's really important to look at your course holistically and think about what do they need to accomplish when they're trying to accomplish it and then put that all in the same place. So it's better to have more information on a page than it is to send them to five pages. Now, if those five pages are not related and they're gonna go in five different modules, of course you would wanna keep them separate. So it's really about your content and your course and what specific needs you have. But I definitely believe students like to, they like to know what's expected of them. And if you can, you know, use the number of pages necessary to get the point across and get the materials to them, you're gonna be in great shape. Melissa, where, where do you, did you put all those images that you're in that image thing that you're looking at, did you put those in there yourself or does it come with images? So I happen to copy example pages out of the commons area. Okay. So commons is gonna be another um, session later okay. on in the series, but it is just a, a, a really awesome collection of other people's stuff. And they generously share it with the community and you can take and edit and use their things. So I went over and I copied stuff out, but normally, if it was my stuff, I would have gone to files and I would have mm -hmm. uploaded 
before I got started building. That's just how I like to build though. Some people like to just add the image right then. I do find though, it makes your file area a little bit of a mess. So it's not my preference. Melissa, is there a way to add an icon when, when you write the word modules, like module one or module two, is there a way to add an icon there also? That is a really great question. And I am so happy I actually know the answer. So I'm gonna open up a different course. Okay. Give me one second. So in my sandbox, No, that's not where I want to go. One sec. View all pages. I have what's called Canvas icons. See all mm -hmm. of these choices here? I don't know what these are. I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend to know like how somebody did this, but they make these icons and I can take them right here off this page right here. I can say copy mm -hmm. and I can go over to my modules. And I can say edit and somehow they paste in like little pictures, but they're not. And it's like magic for me. So I'm not really familiar with how like the behind the scenes here, but I do know that there is a collection of, uh -huh. of um, character, like text-based character icons that can copy into these spaces. I wonder if you can use copy and paste. Yes, that's exactly what I just did. Okay, great. Thanks. Absolutely. Hey, we've got 10 more minutes. Um, any other tips or tricks you want me to take a look and show you? I just I down, Melissa. I'm sorry, repeat that. Let's scroll all the way down. I want to see uh, if there's something there. Huh? But further down. You see, when you create a module, you get this little uh, thing that says drop the file in here. That part, uh -huh. does that ever go away or how do you get rid of that part? That goes away as soon as you put something in there. So let's say, for example, I want to put this item in that space and then I have to refresh because of the way internet browsers work, they don't always um, respond immediately. So now I have an empty one here and it's popped up here. So I can take this one and I can put it there. And now I don't have one. It's just, it's just a, an example of showing you it's empty. It's ready for you to fill. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Melissa, I have just one one more I'm full of questions today. Uh, okay. Do you think that it might be easier to build your, if you're teaching the same course from it, from our Blackboard course to Canvas, say in the, in the fall, would it just be easier to start over, do you think? You know, it really depends. There, you can start over by all means, or you can clean up what you have. If your course is not that messy, Starting from scratch, I mean, you really don't have to. Okay. Um, so really, it just depends. If you have, if you have a huge mess, just make a design consult meeting and and let somebody take a look at it with you because okay. that it is a challenge. But we also, I mean, we've got we've got time. We'll work on it. I've got lots of recommendations. I think the easiest thing to do, as soon as you log into your summer course or fall, whichever one you're doing, go to the files and check out what that looks like. Okay. And then if it's really bad, what I found the easiest thing to do is make a new folder and name it Blackboard Course Copy, right? Because that's really what you're looking at. You're looking at the course copy straight from Blackboard. Then stick everything into that folder right here, move and select that folder for Blackboard course copy. So this is what you're looking at. You put it all in this one folder, you moved everything. And now you can start fresh 
what is it that you want to do? Let's say, for example, um, now you're familiar with your course, so you know your content. Right. Now you can start looking for it. You can say, where's that module one um, item? And I'm, I'm going to actually search for accelerated. I think it's, it's in here. Oh, no. Um, English, I think. I, I don't remember what I called anything because, again, it's not mine. Anything you search for with the word, it's going to pull it up here. Okay. And then you can select it and you can move it out. And that way you can just figure out which is the stuff you want to keep versus what's all the other garbage. And do the quizzes transfer over too? Absolutely, they okay. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when, when all that comes in, you're going to have not only your quizzes, but it's also going to create question banks. So okay. um, yeah, definitely. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, that'll be there. Hey, Melissa, there's a website called copypastedcharacters.com. I put it in the tech in the chat Thank and there's it's free icons. Yes. Yes, that's that's where mine came from. I just copied the ones I wanted to use into my sandbox so I didn't have to go keep finding them. I actually it, it was not my idea to use them. It was somebody else that was already teaching the course. She used them and I thought those are just the neatest I had no idea that they existed. Canvas, yeah, one of the canvas, I think it's actually in the uh, uh, in the uh, Growing with Canvas course. One of the, uh, I think it's the third or fourth module will also have a, a link to some free goodies like that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Can you? Go back and do the steps that you just did to create that folder and the saving. I didn't see like how you create new that. Okay, sure. So this is the files section and it has a folder button. And when you click the folder button, it lets you create a new folder that you can put any name you want. Um, so your folder name goes here. And then you click the check mark it makes you a folder. And then um, basically once you select something, you get this pop-up menu where you can view the item, you can manage access to the item, which means um, like, let's say you don't want your students to read the file until Thursday at 1 p.m. You can do that. You can download, you can move and you can throw it away. So what I did was I clicked the move button and then I told it, please move this. And I chose where I wanted it to go. So just, off the, uh, just, just for the sake of, of letting people know files, um, your course is going to be much safer if you move your files, but don't rename them. When you change a name, even though it's an option, so let's say Accelerated English, I come over here and I say I want to rename it. If I change this name, anywhere that this document is linked on a page won't necessarily work anymore. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And in my opinion, when something isn't consistent, I don't use it. So. The, it's mu you're much better off keeping your names the same. So that's why naming your files without dates, right? So like summer 2020, you don't want to do that. You just want to call it what it is. Okay, any other questions? Do you know when they're going to be transferring the fall blackboard over? Absolutely. You'll have your courses the first part of April. Even if we're not ready cleaning them or doing anything with them? Um, I'm not sure that I understand. They're, the, the process is already... No. I, um, Terry told me, I don't know when, a month or two ago, he was helping me to weed out my blackboard before the transfer happened. 
and I haven't had time to do that yet. Okay, um, yeah, no, um, I would say, Adela, are you with us? When, yes, I am. When will that last, when's her last opportunity to change her Blackboard course before it moves over? It's already been copied. Already been done, so that's okay. You'll just do whatever you wanna to do to it in Canvas. I'll just go through whatever hell it serves up. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, I'll be glad to work with you on getting your course content cleaned up if necessary, but mostly we can just go in and uh, uh, work through what you need to transfer over. Yeah, yeah because I, I have, you know, I've been using it so long, there's uh, accumulated stuff that isn't needed. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's not, it seems like a lot, but it's not it's very um, friendly to pick out what you want and leave the rest behind. So yeah, you'll, you'll definitely be able to work through it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. You'll get Thank the white you. glove treatment, sister. I'm sorry? I said you'll get the white glove treatment. <laughs> well, my problem is with myself, not with the system. Well, we'll be glad to help you out with anything you need. Thank you. Okay, well, that wraps it up for modules and pages. Um, definitely let us know if you have any questions and I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I've stopped sharing if there's nothing else. Um, I guess I am in charge, so I'm going to end the meeting for all. See you guys later.